Hello everyone. This is chapter 21 from my contemporary romance novel Under a Namibian Sky. Naomi felt as though she'd never stop crying. The ache in her heart was a physical pain that no amount of tears could relieve. But Kerry didn't seem to mind. She held her friend in silence and gave a safe space for Naomi to cry herself out. An hour later, Naomi's tears stopped. Her face felt puffy and she needed a tissue badly for her runny nose. Kerry, who could feel the change in Naomi's body, knew that the storm had passed, at least for now. She gently let her friend go and offered Naomi the box of tissues she kept on her desk. I'm so sorry I pushed it, hun. I should have realised what was going on with you, but you know you can always talk to me. You know that, don't you? God knows you've had to listen to my man woes often enough. Naomi nodded and blew her nose in a tissue, taking another to wipe the tears from her eyes and face. Her voice was hoarse when she spoke. I know, thank you, but no one can help me. I have to deal with this myself. Kerry stroked Naomi's hair from her face. I know you feel that way, hun, but you can ask for help, you know. It is allowed. And I know a thing or two about men, so believe me when I tell you, you weren't just a fling for Luca. The man is besotted with you. You should have seen his face when I told him that Stefan was free and you were worried he might show up here again. I swear if he could, Luca would have climbed through, the, through Skype to get here. I don't believe he came here just to test the prototype buggy due ne to arrive next week. He was furious when he heard about what Stefan had done to you. I'm sure he's using the buggies as an excuse to be here so he could see you. Oh, I didn't realise you'd already told him Stefan was free again. Do you really think he came here because of that? Kerry sat back in her chair. Yes, he woke me up in the middle of the night. Apparently, Auntie Elsa and Santina had a late night chat and Auntie Elsa told her about what had happened with you and Stefan. Santina told Luca at once. That's when he called and called until I answered. Can you imagine my reaction when I found his face staring at me on Skype? And to answer your question, no, I don't think he came here because Stefan is free, although that might have put the jeebies up him. He clearly came here to see you were okay, hun. Why is it so hard for you to believe? Perhaps because he's changed so much toward me. Yes, that's puzzling. I don't understand it either, although I think it's just a blip. Your relationship is still new. All kinds of misunderstandings can happen, especially in the beginning. But I still think you should give him a chance. No, actually, amend that. You should give yourself a chance, hun. You deserve it, you know. Hmm. <clears throat> you engineered our meeting today perfectly, didn't you? Kerry's eyes glinted with mischief. I wondered when you'd notice. Kerry's kindness and warm smile made Naomi feel much better. The tears had helped. Auntie Elsa's voice sounded in her mind. Things are always better out than in. Not for the first time, despite the unsettling situation with Luca, Naomi felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude for Auntie Elsa and Kerry in her life. They were her family, and she basked in the comfort of that knowledge. Naomi closed Kerry's office door as she stepped into the corridor. She felt much calmer than when she went in there just over an hour ago. Her meeting with Lucas strangely had intensified her wish to get back to work. That Kerry was in a corner about the situation with him was hugely comforting. Now she didn't feel so alone anymore. In her hand she held the desert guide roster for taking guests on safaris. Kerry had finally agreed it was time for Naomi to get back to work. Work would get her out of the lodge and into her beloved desert. Naomi skimmed over the roster. Kerry had been kind. All the safaris under her name were sunset safaris, which Kerry knew she most loved. The schedule showed her first safari was today. She could hardly wait. 
With a spring in her step, she went back to her room. She needed to sort out her puffy, cried face. It felt good to be back to her old routine. She chatted with the kitchen staff before checking her truck and making sure the walkie-talkie's battery was fully charged. Naomi hadn't expected Luca to join the safari, but when she turned up at the truck, she found him leaning against it, his usual array of camera equipment in his hands. The other guests, plainly beyond excited, had already taken their seats in the truck. Once again, Luca helped Naomi up into the driver's seat before walking around the vehicle to get into the seat beside her. It felt right to have him here again somehow. Driving into the desert to the accompaniment of the excited chatter from her guests, Naomi felt alive again for the first time in days. A spectacular sunset welcomed her back. Beside her, Luca's camera pointed this way and that as he took picture after picture of the ever-changing sameness of the dunes. Behind her, a symphony of oohs and ahs from the guests mingled with the sounds of the animals as she drove to the waterhole. But it was the open space, the wind in her hair, the last of the sun's rays on her face, and the smells of the desert invading Naomi's being that set her free. Here she could breathe again, smile, feel the desert's ancient, wise energy fill up her body. She could be herself again. That the man next to her, whom she loved more than life itself, was here with her at all, completed her happiness. Used to the unpredictability of nature and the desert, Naomi was the first to spot the pride of lions as she drove closer to the waterhole. It was rare to see these big desert cats in this part of the world. She slowed the truck and pointed with one hand, holding up her other hand, to show that everyone had to stay silent. In her heart, Naomi gave thanks to the desert for giving her this rare opportunity to experience these magnificent animals. She was aware of Luca's excitement, practically jumping out of his body. She turned to face her guests and whispered loud enough for them to hear. Don't make any sudden movements or noises. If everyone is okay with it, I'll try to get us a little closer. It's very rare to see desert lions here. In all the time I've been bringing guests here, I've only ever seen them once before. So seeing them now is a fantastic opportunity. I know this truck is open and so it may feel unsafe so near the lions. But look to their left. You'll see they've recently killed and eaten a zebra. It means we are in no danger of attack from them. Is everyone okay with us going a little closer? Smiles and eager nodding greeted her from excited faces. Naomi turned to face forward again and drove slowly toward the lions, lying near their kill. Their tummies were huge from eating more than their fill. As she drove closer, the tiny figures of two small cubs became visible. They were lying on top of a female fast asleep. Their little ears were twitching now and then, but had no real effect on the flies that were pestering them. Only the occasional growl and grunt of satisfaction from the lions disturbed the silence. The contortions their bodies adopted as they lay in various states of stupor and inertia belied their supremacy as the top predator, but it was evident in their level of contentment and complacency. Naomi was aware her, de her guests were practically holding their breaths, feasting their eyes on the wonder before them. Several guests and Luca had their cameras trained on the pride. Luca had swapped his lens on the camera. He was using the same one that produced the great close-ups of the bull elephant they'd seen on their first safari together. One of the little cubs turned in its sleep and inadvertently slid off the female's body. Unable to stop, the cub performed a comical sand dive. A guest laughed. The sound had an immediate effect on the lions. They sat up, their wild predatory yellow eyes fixed on the truck. One female, presumably the mother of the cubs, gave a deep growl, her ears flattening against her head. Naomi took it as a sign they'd outstayed their welcome. She started the 
engine at once and reversed away from the pride as slowly as she dared. When they were several feet away, she breathed a sigh of relief and heard the same from Luca and the guests behind her. Then everyone talked simultaneously. Naomi knew it would be the main topic of conversation at dinner tonight. She smiled, grateful to have been the one to give Luca and her guests such an unforgettable experience. The rest of their safari, although lovely, couldn't live up to their encounter with the lions. Several guests tried googling more information about them until they realised there was no satellite reception in the desert. Back at the lodge, her group of guests mingled with the rest who'd been on safaris with other guides and those who'd elected to stay behind. Her group talked up a storm about the lions they'd encountered. Dinner became one huge affair. The waiters had pulled all the tables in the larpa together. Everyone eagerly leaned forward to hear everything they could about the encounter with the lions. Luca was sharing his pictures with their fellow diners. Although Naomi had looked forward to getting back to work, she had to admit the experience had been more tiring than she could have imagined. When she excused herself and told Luca she'd see him in the pool in the morning, she could tell he was concerned for her. His reaction reminded of her earlier conversation with Kerry. Did he really care for her so much that he would come to Desert Lodge just to see she was okay? It was difficult to believe, but she desperately wanted to. Luca stood up when she did and pulled her chair back for her. He touched on her arm, conveyed his concern. Sleep well, amore. Naomi smiled and nodded at Luca. She could feel his eyes on her back as she walked away. On her way to her room, she bumped into Kerry, who tucked her hand through Naomi's arm and turned toward the kitchen where her dinner awaited. Naomi allowed her friend to sweep her along. A few minutes in the kitchen won't make any difference to how tired she was. You look yourself again, hun. The desert really agrees with you. It does, and you stopped me from going there. I may never forgive you. Kerry giggled at Naomi's joke. The two friends took their places around the big old table where Auntie Elsa sat with other members of staff. As was her habit, after finishing her dinner, Auntie Elsa excused herself to check on the guests and to solve any problems they may have. As she walked to the door, she turned briefly to Naomi. Join me in the lounge after dinner. Naomi nodded and made wide eyes at Kerry when Auntie Elsa had gone. It was an unusual request and sounded more like a summons. Naomi couldn't imagine what Auntie Elsa wanted to talk about that sounded so mysterious. Having already had her dinner in the larpa with Luca, Naomi asked a waitress to deliver coffee to the lounge. Then, winking at Kerry, Naomi left. Although it was supposedly the guest lounge, guests seldom used the grand old room. Naomi sat down on her favourite sofa just as the waitress brought the coffee she'd ordered. She poured herself a cup and settled back onto the sofa. It wasn't long before Auntie Elsa opened the French doors leading from the patio. Oh good, you ordered coffee. Auntie Elsa poured herself some and sat down in her favourite chair opposite Naomi. For moments the women sat in comfortable silence enjoying being together and drinking their coffee. Then Auntie Elsa put down her cup, got up, and came to sit next to Naomi on the sofa. She seemed very serious but calm. She waited for Naomi to finish her coffee before taking Naomi's hands in hers. Darling, I have something to tell you. I am sorry that it can't wait. Time is not on our side in this matter. But before she could say anything more, Naomi had a sudden insight. Her heart beat faster, her chest felt tighter. It was as though her body already knew what Auntie Elsa would say even before the words had left her mouth. Naomi's mouth went dry despite having just had coffee. She felt light-headed but focused on Auntie Elsa's face instead. How had she missed that Auntie Elsa looked so much older so quickly? She was so much thinner. Her face had more wrinkles than Naomi remembered. Her hands felt bony in Naomi's. Naomi glanced down. 
blue veins stood out against the pale skin flecked with age spots on her adoptive mother's hands. Hands that had soothed away her pain as a child. Hands that had cared for her. Hands that still cared. She looked up into Auntie Elsa's eyes. Tears brimmed up the lower lids of the older woman's eyes. She stroked Naomi's hands as though trying to soothe away the pain she was about to inflict on her daughter, the only daughter she'd ever known and loved as though Naomi was her own. She brushed away Naomi's hair from her forehead, leaving her hand on Naomi's shoulder. I've been thinking and thinking about this moment, but there's no easy way to say it, darling. Naomi's voice sounded shrill and desperate to her ears. Then don't say it, don't say anything. That won't make it go away, my darling. It won't make it any easier. Not for either of us. Naomi started to cry. The tourniquet that had squeezed her heart was squeezing tighter, making breathing more difficult. Seeing how upset Naomi was, the dam that held back Auntie Elsa's tears burst. Despite tears streaming down her face, she tried her best to make this as easy as possible for Naomi. She held it in, she'd held the information in her heart for the past week already, but she didn't want to burden Naomi with it on top of the trauma she'd had to deal with because of Stefan's actions. It was difficult enough getting her head around the verdict, and she knew her delay in telling Naomi sprung partly from denial, together with a desperate hope that the doctors had been wrong in their diagnosis. But she had already lost one week. Further tests had confirmed only a few more weeks might be allowed her. She couldn't wait any longer, no matter how fervently she prayed to spare Naomi this pain. It's pancreatic cancer, darling. The prognosis, she sighed. I have a few weeks at best. Naomi couldn't believe it. She shook her head as though to shake the words away. I know, darling. There's nothing they can do. It's spread too far. But you didn't have any symptoms. Through the tears clinging to her eyelashes, Naomi squinted at Auntie Elsa. Panic had replaced a slowness, a numbness in her body. Did you? Auntie Elsa looked down. No, I didn't. I had some backache, but I thought I'd just been working too hard. That's why you made Kerry manager. No, I didn't know then. I made her manager because I could see she would be an excellent in the job, perhaps even better than me. And it was time. Now I'm glad I did it. Naomi held on to Auntie Elsa's hands and wiped her tears on her arm. So when? Auntie Elsa had expected Naomi's questions. She'd do anything to spare her daughter this pain. In her experience, knowing the details of a bad situation had always brought relief somehow. It was all she had to offer Naomi. I've been going to see the doctor in Mariental. But that's miles away. Ota Yen drove me. Naomi sank her head onto Auntie Elsa's shoulder. The numbness that had invaded her body had reached her mind. So that's where you disappear to. We all thought, oh, Auntie Elsa, is there really nothing? How about going to Vintuk? Another opinion. Auntie Elsa moved closer to Naomi and held her, stroking her hair and back. No, my darling, there is nothing. It's too late. The scans and tests showed because of how it spread. It's untreatable. I'm so sorry, Naomi. I truly am. Auntie Elsa sighed again. She'd known how challenging this news would be for Naomi, who'd already lost so much in her young life. All she could do was try to make the end as pleasant for them both as possible. But we have this time together now. Let's enjoy what we still have. Naomi nuzzled her head into Auntie Elsa's neck, her arms around the woman who'd saved her life the woman she'd loved like the mother she'd lost. But even as she voiced the plea that flowed from her heart, she knew she had lost again, that death had won once more.
please don't leave me please thank you for watching thank you for listening thank you for sharing and liking my videos and most of all thank you so much for subscribing to my channel I really appreciate it until next time